Fun fact? Do you not? Oh, yeah. You're wearing mine. <laughs> there they are. I knocked them on the ground. Oh, that didn't work. Let me put on the that for you a little bit. That was so peaceful. It sounded like the beginning of like a commercial. <laughs> I liked it. Welcome. Uh, Allegra. <laughs> uh, have you been not enjoying what you can't you see? And... <laughs> well, you can't see because this is a, a audio is that the whole room turned brighter, more vivid colors when I went. <sighs> that was a Pleasantville. Yeah. Pleasantville. Uh, well, I was thinking Allegra commercials, but also Pleasantville. Yeah. Oh, true. We could cross over. This is Brady Harden. Uh, I'm and this here is with... a crossover episode of Allegra commercials <laughs> <laughs> in Pleasantville. Yeah, this has been our first episode in a really hot minute. Uh, yeah. I think once COVID hit, life went weird. And then on oh, top of that, sure. like life just went weird in general with podcast world and like having to deal with making ends meet how are we going to get kids to school or not oh and God. and oh, just triggered life um but it's been a long time and it's really good to be back it is we're back in the studio we got there's there's a little bit of uh, some upgrades have happened although ironically we're having like more technical difficulties than normal <laughs> who cares because it's... i have an outdated audio interface but it's Love, uh, but it literally replaces with the audio. But, um, Chuck, what would you say is kind of like, how has your life changed? Oh my God. Since our last episode. <laughs> oh my God. That's like, I don't know. I don't even know how to quantify that. Like, I, I COVID for me was like a chance to hit, hit the reset button on my life. Yeah. yeah. And I fixed a lot of things about my life life that I didn't like, you know? So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm like starting in a new industry now. I got out of bartending or I'm on, working on getting out of bartending at the moment. Um, I did like so much meditation and like dealing with my mental health in a way that is like organic and, and like more lasting, mm -hmm. you know, because I had the time Right, there like was I so much time of like having to reflect. I think like so much of us being busy is not wanting to have that alone time at home. Yeah, where it's just us. Yes, and it sounds like you benefited from that in great ways. Yeah, I did. Um, I remember like it was probably like three weeks or a month in to like I guess I guess sort of the NBA canceling like marks the beginning okay. in so many ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where not it's in like, my life, oh, but shit, sure, this yeah. This is real. Like there were billions of dollars at stake, and they decided to cancel. Sports ball. Yeah, sports ball. Um, but it was like a month or so after that, like when my bar was closed, and I think I realized that I was like I felt rested for the first time, mm. and like I mean, and since I was like a child. Wow, <laughs> you know, or is like, oh, is this what it's like to not feel tired? <laughs> like I was like, I have energy. Like I'm happy to be awake. I'm waking up earlier. I started waking up at like seven thirty and eight in the morning. Nice, which is like, nice. To I haven't done that since I was an adolescent, and it's still like difficult to do. But it got to the point where it was like sustainable. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, man. I mean, it was like something really clicked when I felt, when I realized that I felt rested and then that was not a part of my regular life. Yeah. You know, I was like, Oh, I'm doing something way wrong. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, or like the system that I'm part of is like super flawed, which is also part of it. Like being in the capitalist system. It's like, you're, and that's kind of part of it to be tired. too, is when we have that time to be alone and understand who we are as people, we start to see, where we place into that, like a cog in that machine and right. system and kind of gives us more of an objective approach to looking at it. Yeah. 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 That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. It was like a little bit of an objectivity in the way that I look at myself. You know, it's I like, love whoa. that. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of reading done or like reading with quotes, which is listening to audio books, audio books, right. right <laughs> which right, I right. think is, completely legitimate way i mean i learned i 
absorb information by listening way better than I do by reading anyway. So it's mm-hmm. like, man, um, I just want to normalize listening to audiobooks as it's a important. means of, of educating yourself. Um, it gives, I go through phases too. I'm going through one that's like a re- renaissance of reading ebooks right now. Oh yeah. And then I'll go through a time where it's like, oh, you know, I really like physical books. And it's like, but all through that, I'm always listening to audio books as well. I just yeah. finished one recently of um, Leslie Jordan. He is the little white gay actor who was like in the help and in okay. American horror story and everything. Okay. He came from like a Southern Baptist background and talked about how growing up gay affected him and everything. And it was, it was cool, but that's one of my favorite things with audiobooks is listening to people tell their stories in their own voice. Oh, right. Especially yeah. when it's like Leslie did Jordan, you For know, sure. cause it's yeah. such a distinctive voice. <laughs> uh-huh. but, um, good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I, I feel like I, I sorted out a lot of things that I just genuinely didn't have time to figure out before. Yeah. It may, it like, I know that, like, I want to acknowledge that like quarantine was an absolutely like atrocious experience for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It was not for me. It was, it was like, it was like art school or I mean, like not art school, like, uh, (laughs) like, like like summer camp. It was like summer camp for me. (laughs) I like that. Um, (laughs) Mine was a little different, I guess, like when it came to some of the logistics, just like as a single parent and having to do my son's schooling for that yeah, semester that's and a lot, at the same time that I was like working from home. And another thing that made that very difficult is because at the same time in quarantine, kind of similar to your experience, I had a lot of reflection. I was able to understand more of my neurodiversity and yeah. um, understand like how I, I identify more of like ADHD and like, I think that's more of like where I'm at and, and, and understanding the implications of that and, um, certain medication and also like restructuring my life and how I organize myself into a way that really helps even more. Um, but I had to learn that real quick, mm-hmm. um, you know, juggling yeah. all of those things. And it was, it was frustrating. And if you hadn't learned it, like how bad would that have been? <laughs> right. <laughs> Not easy. You know, I don't know if I would still have a job or whatever, but right. like, um, it was something I'd learned. And so, you know, having this time away from the podcasts, it was helpful to have like one less thing that was in uh, the cooker. Right. Right. But at the same time, it was just, it was, not easy for a while, but whenever found my, my sea legs, um, really did benefit from understanding myself more and reading more books and understanding my neurodiversity and, um, how I can lean into it and more of meditation and, um, just trying to find the word. This has been one of my really important things too, is just learning how to word, my deconstruction experience oh, sure, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. and and understanding that that is a form of mental health as well as to equip yourself with the terminology and the vocabulary to express yourself. Yeah. Even these like super complex feelings and, um, yeah, that's been very enlightening and, uh, dude, I feel like helpful. for me, like when I hit that, like for me, the moment that I sort of like begin to, start conquering something that I'm Mm -hmm. wrestling with is when is the moment where I start finding language for it or I find a metaphor for it that Mm -hmm. like captures it. You know what I mean? Cause then it's like, okay, I got you now. Cause I can like use this metaphor to explain you. And now that I can explain you, you don't have nearly as much power because you're not big and scary and foreign. You are uh, akin to something I'm already familiar with. Name one metaphor that sticks out in your mind that's like had that sort of function oh, in your life. Oh, a uh, huge, huge one for me that I came up with pretty early in my deconstruction was um, the idea of God as an abusive father. Mm, where it's like, mm-hmm. okay, if you if you didn't talk to Hilo right. when he talked to you, you know, be a bad that would father. be you'd be a bad father, right. and if you didn't help or heal Hilo when he wounded himself or like at least take him to the hospital, Mm -hmm. you would be abusive and you would probably have your kid taken away. It should. Absolutely. Right. And it it was that realization that like, Oh, this is, this is how God behaves. (laughs) 
This is how the God that I've been viewing as a father behaves. That's really... That's, and that was like, okay, I can I could feel much more comfortable disregarding mm. this idea of God. Because you can stand on that now. You yes. know what I mean? Like you... Yeah. you Another way to, to word what you've done just recently, I've like had another way of wording that is um, God's relationship, understanding God's when I was growing up, right? The idea of God, how he interacted with the metaphors like God is a good father. He's a good shepherd. He's this, he's that, he's, he's love. Right. Understanding the relationship is that he isn't putting meaning into the those comparisons or metaphors he's extracting the meaning Mm -hmm. um it's passing Mm -hmm. that judgment of oh he is a good father but there's no supporting evidence for that it's just that that judgment is now something that he has taken but hasn't put a penny back into the leave a penny take a penny thing it's just (laughs) always taking from those metaphors right not adding to them because there's nothing really in the bible that you could say oh he was a good father there he he sacrificed one son to save a whole bunch okay but then you realize who is he paying the ransom to himself who is requiring (laughs) himself so like that metaphor dies but god was having a bad mental health day (laughs) but like it doesn't matter because that relationship isn't one of two sides. It's only a one sided relationship with that metaphor. Right. That's important. I like that. I think one of the early ones that came into my ministry or like deconstruction, my ministry was a friend of ours, uh, who was in the ministry at that time was called into a meeting with the pastors and the pastor is the one who put her in that position. And one of the elders was an asshole and said mean things to her. And the pastor sat there and didn't intercede. Right. And then afterwards wanted to apologize. And that metaphor was so much of how I felt God responded to my spiritual abuse mm. that he brought me there Mm -hmm. it was because of my belief and dedication to him that i was in this situation to be abused by these like leaders and these like pastors but once i was there i was on my own Mm -hmm. and that metaphor like just that that example that 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 adage or that little story just stuck with me and really helped shape my deconstruction and how i started to view things from that point on Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Damn metaphors. I know, right? That shit helps. Well, um, you, you fight you fight metaphors with better metaphors, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, you fight. Well, I would say you fight traumatic experiences with better metaphors. True. Like that's like. Yeah. I mean, that's where that's what has helped me over the last few months, like mm. grow quite a bit and and i I mean like probably my whole life and probably my whole deconstruction is like if i really boiled it down it's like i struggle with something i come up with language for it and then i start to move past it because i have language for it yeah yeah but it takes time i mean there's a there's a significant gap between like i'm done with that part of my life and i've learned the language for it it's just the beginning but it's the beginning of like winning you know Mm. or at least that's how i kind of see it that's why it feels so huge when you find the language. Yes. Yeah. It's freeing. I, I think... Uh, You're uh, like, oh, this is the elixir, you know? <laughs> it, it, the, it's like Joseph Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Jamie Lee Finch, like whenever she was starting off, was really... Jamie Lee Finch. Jamie Lee Finch. Jamie Lee Finch. The way that she talked about like, uh, you know, being like a lighthouse and when you talk about your experience and honesty about it, then other people who have that hear Mm -hmm. it and they're like, no, that represents me. And so it's that same process, right? Of like that sort of like language and education of, yeah, you learn about it, you're able to define it. Right. And you don't have to come up with the metaphor yourself. You can find it, you know, somewhere else. Yeah. Like, or you can broadcast it to other people. Yeah, for sure. That's what podcasts are for. That's what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and it also like another big thing since we've broadcast last, or <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word, but um, you know, there was a big change in, in, in events that happened in the, the Facebook group and oh, uh, yeah. people that 
we respect and like, and we had disagreements and yeah. had, uh, didn't want to handle the situations all in the same way. And communication broke down and yeah. it was not a good situation. Uh, I'm glad that we put things on pause for a while yeah. and kind of allowed ourselves to take a step back and learn and grow. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Uh, but at that time it was, that was hard, right? Oof. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> That was a hard thing to have to go through. And not to like, not, and not, necessarily not like, just for us, you know, not right. for everybody that was involved. It was a very hard thing to go through. And, you know, m- yes, I guess without like, I don't want to get into too much details, but I don't want to, I don't want to act like we had the worst, you know, uh, or that you, it didn't happen. You and I and the mods did not, ha- you know, get the worst of what all went down. So it's, you know. Yeah. And it- the important thing now is that we've learned, we've all learned, and like the the group uh, is we've mods in place that I've been doing a great job, and have like yeah, we, we totally had... replaced the mod team after that. Yeah, it started renew like... of like fresh, and it was I feel like a good decision for us and a good decision for everyone around. I feel like it's created a more safe online group. One hundred percent, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, yes, we and, are mu- we are so much better at monitoring that group now. <laughs> and very grateful for yes. the moderators who we had, and even if things didn't work out, but now the ones that we have as well, and uh, that things are working out. And for me, the important thing is I, I just want to continue to have a space and have conversations about people who are coming out of deconstruction because this is a phenomenon that's happening as it's happening. Mm-hmm. We're here, and uh, people need safe places to question and to figure out who they are and their beliefs. And that's what I want to focus on. That's mm-hmm. what I want to be able to do. And mm-hmm. that's how I want to be able to contribute into that world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of that to say, like, I think, uh, a lot of important things were learned at a phase where it was important to learn them in mm-hmm. the process. And that's, uh, huge. And, and it also huge. happened just in that, like, super hot pot of quarantines world you know like that oh, 2000 yeah, yeah, yeah. and 20 world and nobody had anything to do but look at their computers oh god right <laughs> and so coming yeah coming out of that i think has been really important and just kind of getting back into sunlight and yeah. uh, opening the windows and having things fresh and it's been it's been nice yeah and i'm glad that you know over this time like shows can be back and the show can continue to help and but my the the thing that i want to focus on with this new season is providing that language to like Mm -hmm. that we are talking about Mm -hmm. and the more that i think we do that and keep it as nuanced as the deconstruction world is at at each point Mm -hmm. um that sort of language I think is going to help people and not in a way that instead of focusing on the specific belief systems that people have now to focus on how do we find what's healthy for us? Mm -hmm. How do we find what actually is equal and inclusive to other people that actually are uh, pushing our species towards a better direction Mm -hmm. um i think that's important does Mm -hmm. that make sense what do you feel yeah yeah definitely uh yeah i mean it's if we don't have that conversation people are just going to sit in trauma soup for the rest of their life you know what i mean Mm because it's that's the that's really the important conversation because it's that's how you move past i mean in so many ways after you deconstruct christianity is still the center of your life because it because it has such a hold. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's like you're so traumatized and angry and like processing all of these terrible experiences and trying to justify who you are to yourself, but also like to, you know, your family, if your family is religious, which most of us, you know, our families are, or our friends that, you know, we hang on to after deconstruction that we're we're trying to validate ourselves. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's like, if we don't, if we don't find that language and find that way, the ways to put that trauma in a different 
frame, mm. then it's still just running. It's just going to sit there, right? Yeah. And, and I think it's important, too, to have language that kind of empowers people over ideologies. That if it's like this mm-hmm. ideology or this belief system of like these, this narrative belief is what kind of created the situations that created this abuse and created trauma. Um, to me, it's, it's important to kind of address that mm-hmm. and to figure out a better way forward that doesn't just keep perpetuating mm-hmm. that sort of situation over and over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, was one, one thing that I think of is, uh, when it comes to doubting or questioning, uh, your doubts and questions should matter. Uh, right. and, and I feel that there's a lot of, uh, people who want to kind of like pat doubting on the head and mm-hmm. defang it, you mm-hmm, know, kind mm-hmm. of mean, make it, yeah, your, 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 your doubts and questions are fine, but just don't do it too much or don't right, do it right, in a right. way that gets in our way it's like the way biden treats black lives matter <laughs> okay it's like it's like yeah we're gonna yeah we're gonna uh, you know we're gonna do more training for the police or something you know it's gonna be okay and mm-hmm. it's like we're fucking getting shot like will you please like you know do something about yeah. it more drastic yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that's kind of how churches treat doubt uh mm. you know it's like Oh yeah, you can process your, you know, your your feelings of doubt, like, you know, in our it's like you can you can struggle and you can wrestle. Is yes, like the language, yes, yes, yes. Like, wrestle with God, but it's like, All right? Don't just don't conclude that Jesus didn't raise from the dead or whatever. You right. know what I mean? It's like, or that Jesus wasn't God or whatever. Or that uh, Jesus was just a teacher, but still deserves to have communities centered on him 2000 years ago for some reason. Right. Right. right, right? right. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. And so I think what I, what I, what I, what I see uh, with deconstruction, what I'm learning and reflecting on is, well, what about those people who, who, who aren't going to fit into these progressive spaces or these other church spaces that, that um, maybe their doubting was the wrong brand of doubting. Mm-hmm. They did it too much. Well, what about us? Right. And, and, and is it okay for communities to uh, be inclusive to everyone, but people like us? Like, is that okay? Or, right. you know, and just really reflecting at an understanding now, like, um, people should be empowered mm-hmm. in our deconstructions. I think deconstruction is a, it's a, it's a demonstration. It's a act of empowerment towards people taking right. the power that we gave up as kids, starting as children, right. many of us. Or yeah, yeah, right. Or as an adult. Yeah. Or as an adult, if we came in later, but mm-hmm. the, the power and, and the autonomy that we gave up, our deconstruction is potentially the ability to, bring that systematically back home to where it belongs. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Because the Nash, it's like big picture, right? Cause it's like the natural state of humans is to, is to not have dogmatic beliefs that separate each other. People. Right. right. Yes. Yes. In a sense. I mean, like we haven't been that way in a very, very long time, but you know, it's like, it it seems like that's the goal, right? Mm-hmm. Is to is to break down any barriers that we decide aren't necessary, which is most barriers. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, it and it's bigger than leaving your faith. It is like taking a step toward a more whole humanity in yeah. the future, and like maybe not even a whole humanity, but maybe like a whole Earth or a whole like existence of life on this planet right it's like Mm. even bigger than humanity right because if we get along then the the earth the whole earth benefits right because we're not absolutely yeah we're not so destructive you know so it's like it's like almost a little like hippy dippy but like big picture it's not you know it's not hyperbolic to say that an individual deciding that they're no longer going to submit themselves to to dogma that they deem an unnecessary reason to divide 
people. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. When a million individuals decide that, it makes a difference. God, that's such a good point. Like, it's been my experience recently with like, uh, like a progressive church that I've been reading up on and, and questioning the pastor because I, I don't understand it. I mm-hmm. don't get it. Um, and then the questions... You don't get progressive Christianity? What, Brady? Here's what I don't understand. Is <laughs> on the church website, it was like, we are inclusive of all, all capitals, like ALL, all caps, all people. And then went on to say, but then as I started to question him, it, it is an inclusive community for all people. It's an inclusive community for Christians, uh, for people who are doubting but are staying loyal to Christianity, or people who um, are questioning... And will land in that in that in the space that they're comfortable right, with. Right, 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 right. Because if somebody yeah. doubts and they yeah. land outside of that, they're not welcome or whatever. So right. what it reminds me of is like my white ass male ancestors who wrote the Declaration of Independence or you know started our country and is like uh, for all people. But then to find out, no, right. it really wasn't, no, it all, wasn't people. all people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and, you know, it's like it's like, hey, yeah, you can be in my band. Oh, you play oboe. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we weren't looking for a Nobel player. Yeah. <laughs> but then it becomes everybody re- can be in our band. But then it becomes the play. responsibility of people who are not part of that all to say, why aren't we part of that all? Right, right, right. Um, and to me, like, I hear a lot of like people say that the point of religion is to bring people together. To me, that seems like if that is the goal, then. Um, we would be willing to let go of these metaphors that claimed exclusivity or sure. are intrinsically treated as if they have claims exclusivity, of exclusivity. Yeah. Um, it just it would make sense that if the ideology is the focus, it's ideolo- it's, it's idolatry, uh-huh. <laughs> right? Because the focus isn't the metaphor. The focus is right. the meaning right, right, and right. the values behind the metaphor. So if it really is about unity and community... The focus is Jesus Christ, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then, then people would be willing to give up their triggering metaphors just as Jesus said, don't let your brother stumble. Right, right, right. Or right. don't... Don't well, offer that meat meant, that's been don't sacrificed. Don't wear tight shirts so they masturbate, Brady. <laughs> that's what that meant. That's all Jesus meant. Exactly. But, so uh, I've been, I would, oh, Do you hear ahead. what I'm saying? Just that exchange, that sort of like relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would frame it differently, uh, probably in a way that you would not, it, which is totally fine. That's why we're different people. But I tend to think that, so for me, a lot of my journey over the last year has been a move away from, like I was... I would say pretty much from 2015 when I deconstructed, or 2014 when I deconstructed, and until earlier this year, I would have called myself a hard materialist, meaning like I okay. don't really think that there's anything beyond what can be observed using, you know, our senses or machines, right? Um, but that has sort of broken down for me, not by any will of my own. But I would say that, like, so part of me reflecting on my deconstruction, which I'm I'm always trying to do, not obsessively, but, like, if you look back every few years afterwards, you might start to think, oh, I, I think of this experience differently than I did when it first happened right, or when right. I first deconstructed, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. So it's, like, one of the things that a lot of... it's This is, like, a topic of a lot of debate, I think, in post-Christian worlds is, like, if you had an experience where you saw somebody actually get healed or you saw, you know, like really charismatic, crazy shit happening, but you maybe were the one getting like blown over or whatever. And you had this experience of like actually getting knocked the fuck over. And you're like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain that. Or for a lot of people, it's just the conversion experience. It's like, I felt a profound sense of forgiveness that was meaningful to me. And that's what I kept going back to. And that's what kept me in the system for so long, you know? Right, right. And it's like, to me, that's the, that's a mystic experience. And a mystic experience is a universal thing that exists in every religion. I mean, there's healings in every religion. There are, you know, in encounters with otherworldly beings in, other, in every religion, whether they're in your mind or not, subject, is not really right. my mm-hmm. concern, you know? It's just that it is an experience that people have, and to them it feels very real. But the error that every religion makes, I think, is that... They say, oh, you just had this experience. Here's what it means. And here's this book that explains 
mm-hmm. the profound sense of forgiveness you just had. It's this God, and these are the stories about him. And it's like, you don't fucking know that, man. Like, right. you don't know what that was. There's a level of, like, supernatural conflation right. of um, you had this experience, now this is how we it's contextualize it. It's applying dogma to something that is inherently unexplainable. Yes. And it's, like, so ironic to do that, because you're like... That's unexplainable. Here, let me explain it. You're like you're literally trying to acknowledge both. Mm-hmm. You know the unexplainable forgiveness. The un- I can't. I believe in Jesus because I can't explain how it felt to be forgiven by God. Yeah. But then you're like, but here are all the solutions. You know, and it's like that to me is you're applying dogma to something that is inherently should not be have dogma applied to it and it's especially shouldn't be because it's such a powerful experience so it ropes people in if you can convince somebody that that experience means xyz right you have them right right and so it's like we need to move away from dogmatizing mystic experiences right it's like yeah, I, I probably never would have, if somebody had come to me and, and said, like, here's the Buddhist path, here's the Hindu path, here's the, you know, whatever, Bahanai path, you know, it's like, when I was 12, and I was sitting in my room having these, like, worship experiences, where I'm, like, listening to worship music and experiencing what I would have at the time called Jesus, which I would now maybe call the divine, maybe call the universal consciousness, maybe call it, like, something in our brains that makes us feel connected with everything, yeah. you know, whatever it is, I don't really care what it is. That's the whole point of why I'm saying this is it's like, we need to stop hijacking that experience and saying that it means X, Y, Z, because it's like so much the heart of like why humans are so divided over religion, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's I, like taking like a sacred experience that's deeply personal and saying that was brahmin or whatever recontextualizing it to affirm this entire conflated story and history and everything that has no it's it's putting the cart before the horse it's a prejudice yes it's it's not saying yes uh here's what you experienced uh and this is what it is it's what is saying that it's saying you experienced this it is this now therefore believe this yes and, and you have to and that conflation is inappropriate it's wrong one thing that i it's, noticed it's coercion it's manipulation and coercion is what exactly. it is at the end of the day and it's, it's, a it's big like sw- yeah and i think a lot of people do it on accident because they don't know better right but it's still coercion and manipulation I, it makes me think of a cult documentary that i watched when i was deconstructing i think it was called um holy hell but it was kind of this guy would produce psycho so give them drugs oh, produce yeah. feeling in them and then uh, without them knowing and then tell them well that is that mm. is the touch of the divine that is this god that we that has empowered me to teach you all and so then it um, and so it's kind of like when it comes to manipulative storytelling like the passion of the christ mm-hmm. so we're watching jesus being whipped and, and and naturally as as empathetic people uh we care and we we see them and, and but then it's like oh well that's the holy spirit then because right. you're being, and it's um, what I hear you yeah, saying. Yeah, that's like an even more stripped down, like bare bones version of what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Because that's just appealing to basic human empathy. But what, what I hear you saying, though, is kind of that thing that all of these belief systems have in common because they're intrinsic to the human experience. They're not intrinsic to any one of those belief systems at all. Right. Um, Correct. None of them have the essence. None of the them horse. say, my essence is. Uh, <laughs> but right. you know it, it's right there's whatever. no way there's no way for the text to con- to connect itself to your mystic experience mm-hmm. there's no way for those two things to actually there's no way to prove that the text is that so you know what is it that each one of those belief systems then like starts to do to claim that as their own well it has to do with the music Right, mm-hmm. like it's the same repetitive thing, but then it's like no, or our music invokes the real feelings that it should be mm-hmm. not like mm-hmm. the other religions that do the same thing. It's completely different. Not like those theologically incorrect worship songs. Exactly, and you even get those distinctions even within the same right religion yeah. and yeah. sect, yeah. right? right. <laughs> um, and so it becomes where each one is trying to claim the same human intrinsically like experience. 
but each are trying to claim it as proof of their divine stories instead of finding language that um, I don't even want to demystify it. I mean, I personally, cause that's more of my flavor than, than you, but mm-hmm. like what I hear both of us saying is, well, let's find new language that actually describes that mm-hmm. in a way that describes its essence mm-hmm. and how it helps humans mm-hmm. instead of making it a misusing it as a form of representation for a deity that actually doesn't show up or like even more so like most deities represent an ideology right so Mm -hmm. it's like you're really hijacking the mystic experience to promote your ideology tribalism yeah it's tribalism yeah i mean it's yeah it's all of that right so anyway yeah it is it is very important to um to call out i think people that are you know i the phrase call out has a lot of baggage but to draw attention when a person is um trying to we appropriate claim, the power yeah claim claim exclusivity mm. uh or no 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 claim inclusivity is what i meant to say um when somebody's trying to to go back to your point when somebody's trying to claim inclusivity but they are often unaware of what that actually requires. With the people, you know, it's it's all the people, right? Right. Or white white men who own. Right, right. right. I right. mean, it, it's it is it's so much white men, but it's also like it's the same thing with you know if you were raised to be uncomfortable around black people, and you claim you want to be inclusive, you have to meet black people. Not not just like be like you can come in here, you're allowed, but you have to be like I appreciate what you are bringing to the table. Yeah. And you, that's a totally different ball game. It's important that they say they're included, not for you to say that they are. Yes. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, for sure. And, and so when I see like these like, progressive church, like, no, we include doubters. Well, as a doubter, mm, you right, don't. Right. Like what, like, can I go to that church you were talking about and do a sermon about why Kanye West, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is the greatest album of the 2010s. Because I have a lot of good things to say about it <laughs> that would that would be beneficial to people listening. I, I think the spectrum of what's beneficial may be a little different proportionate here, but continue. You know, it's there, yeah, right? I it's, it's there. And I'm using it because it's an extreme example, but that's the point. That's like the whole point. If you want to claim exclusivity, you have to be ready to like cater to the fringes. Inclusivity, yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And, and to benefit them for the essence of who they are, not how they can benefit the essence of what you want from them. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to honor doubters, give them the mic and let them talk about why they doubt, uh, the, uh, raise awareness on, on, on religious indoctrination, talk about the problematic origins of the Bible. And let's be honest about, how problematic Jesus is calling women dogs and like mm-hmm, all of these mm-hmm. things and the exclusivity claims of whether or not those were actually quoted by Jesus or not, sure, sure, but sure. still like treated in a way that is exclusive. I mean, it is exceptional exceptionalism of how Jesus is treated compared to other, other people. And well, he's a son of God or no, he's, he's not anyway, right. moving on from that, but just like that, you get what I'm saying? It's just, understanding each one of those steps and understanding how to conceptualize it and, and really describe it of how yep. it's operating, how it actually operates in real life, uh, as opposed to how it says, uh, how it markets itself is operating. Right. Right. Know? Right. I was thinking of an example of that. Uh, I was thinking about the term, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And I was thinking about critical race theory. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we grew up with uh, treat others the way you want to be treated, which is helpful, but it lacks dynamics. Uh-huh. Uh, it's not just treat others the way they want, you want to be treated because me as a white person, I don't know how I would want to be treated as a black person because I haven't been into that experience. Right, so right, right. it's also treating others the way that they would want to be treated or how you would want to be treated if you were in their shoes. Dude, I've, I've thought about that so much. And I was having a conversation with my mom actually, um, where I was, 
she i've been having more conversations with my mom about what i believe and why i am not a christian yeah in like pieces and it's been nice i mean it's like she is uh she's being respectful um which i know is not a luxury a lot of people have i don't know um, what you're talking about <laughs> yeah exactly but um yeah and i was like i mean for example you know it's like jesus said treat others the way you want to be treated and like i didn't use this example with my mom but the one i always think of that cracks me up i would use this with my dad because it's obnoxious enough that it would like click with it through his thick mm-hmm. um but it's like if i have a spanking fetish that means i should spank you jesus because <laughs> right, i right, like right. being spanked right that make that gives me pleasure mm-hmm. so let me spank you yeah why wouldn't why don't you want to be spanked <laughs> and that's like the error in what jesus said and it's so funny because there's so many better versions of the golden rule right but it, it <laughs> from other say, religions and, and i'm not bringing that to be like oh jesus really fucked this up but what it is to say is like there are other there's sources um that when we open ourselves up to them equally you know like a metaphor is supposed to right uh it, 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 when you when you look at them like without that discrimination or exclusivity or special like unique treatment that you only give to the home team uh without that we open our our, our minds to so many other ways of wisdom that you know the, the first step of wisdom is not the fear of god it, it's questioning Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and and that's a universal thing that's a that's a human that's an intrinsic thing to all of us and right. so that's 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 a big contextual difference and a big yeah when you change your starting point and your direction right fuck right right yeah endless possibilities oh man something else pops into my head while you're saying that but i don't remember what it was um that's right. i was saying about uh I think it was before I went on the, on the oh, side tangent okay, about my mom. So it's. Oh, by the way, your mom is unfriended me on Facebook. I think that's good because I said I had a I had a thing I had a I had a status. I didn't know my mom was friend, had friended you on Facebook. Joyce, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I did not. I did not know that. So I had <laughs> my mom followed you on Facebook for from, how long? From a couple of years now. What? Yeah, and so uh, I had how? commented. I had commented, why the fuck does the church need marketing when they have the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and she said... Good point. Oh, no. She said um, something to the lines of, this is too far. <laughs> good oh, luck, my God. Good luck on your journey. I hope you find what you're looking for. <laughs> it was that... <laughs> it was that essence. Oh, like, Mom sorry mom what's funny is she's probably going to hear this conversation one day and i do not that does i don't care about (laughs) what that's 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 hilarious i didn't know that she followed you on facebook that's kind of amazing that she lasted two years i am abrasive i can be kind of a break i yeah and and, yeah and you don't know my mom very well but she's she's not a a very she's a very soft person (laughs) Like it's part of my morning person. ritual to find a meme that represents how I feel about religion right, and right, right, yeah. dehumanizing ideologies for the day. And uh, I post it and, and that makes me feel empowered. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I oh even... my God. This is like such a good reveal that my <laughs> I... mom's been following you for two years and I had no idea. I, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> What is it? Yeah, what can you this do? is like the new Gossip Girl, <laughs> <laughs> which I have watched both the episodes reboots? that are out. Oh yeah, yeah. the reboot. It's uh, so far. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm invested. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it could be terrible. I mean, the original one was terrible, but I still watched the whole thing over quarantine. So you're right. Um, <laughs> you know, and on that note, this might be a good time to take a little break. And when we come back, what are we going to come back to, Chuck? Um, when we come back, we are going to talk about whatever it is that we're talking about when we get back. We'll be right back to talk about the thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about facts. Hello there, 
Chuck. <laughs> I didn't see you there. How are you? Hmm? Good. Just uh, editing the episode. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Oh, you commoner and your common talk. I guess I'm what you would say, <laughs> doing not much. <laughs> what is this? Chuck. Psst. Chuck, it's me, your pal Brady. I'm practicing patronizing, so I'm working on being more condescending to people. <laughs> oh, Ooh. do you have any idea where Matt can get some crumpets around here? <laughs> uh, wh why are you doing this? You know, for our Patreon, we've been asking people to patronize our page, and I didn't <sighs> want to ask them to do something I wasn't willing to do it myself, so I figured I'd get some practice. In. Oh, God. Brady, no, that's, huh? that's what? not what it means. Oh, no? Listen. Listeners can go to our Patreon page, pick the level you want to contribute. Oh. Each level has special rewards. Okay. Like exclusive life after mini sods. Or not safe for work bloopers? Uh, or like a monthly collection of deconstruction memes. And even personal consultations or meet up with your favorite host, Chuck and Brady? Yeah. Brady. Patreon.com slash the life after. <laughs> I guess even you could find it. <laughs> And welcome back to Life After. That's my, uh, that's my, uh, oh, I can't think of his name. The armchair expert. What the fuck is his name? Dex Shepard. Dex Shepard, that's my name. He, he does some, Ooh. yeah, he Open can do some really up. interesting things with his voice. Yeah, he does do some strange things with his voice. He, <laughs> I like him. Yeah, he's, he's, I, I enjoy his show. He's a little too centrist for me but but uh i he has some really good guests on his show he does and he has some moments of kind of surprising awareness uh and then other yeah, times yeah, where yeah. it's like uh -huh. oh you could really use a lot more awareness yeah <laughs> that's a very yeah that's such a good way to put it <laughs> it just keeps you guessing like he's he's so often frames things in terms of men do this and women do this and i'm like oh yeah okay really is this 2021 what like yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What did California do to you? Women are more like, and I'm like, you. we were literally just talking about how we need to deconstruct gender like 10 minutes ago. Right, How did right. you get here? Right, right, right. But it's because you haven't deconstructed gender yet. But he's working on it. He's, he's a, you know. I think that's why we like him. He's like a work in progress. Man, that was a tangent. But, you know, I like Dex Shepard. That's he's where we are. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, one thing going forward is knowing how much this show's changed shit for us mm -hmm. and how much our life has changed over this time. oh my god yeah you know yeah, yeah. and <laughs> i don't know like would do would you like to kind of talk about future of the show and kind of what you're yeah yeah well okay so i actually have a a bit of an announcement maybe it's a confession i don't know uh are you St. Augustine now, or are you feeling more... <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> no, um, I am actually leaving the show. I'm leaving the life after. Um, to to do some other stuff with the time that I used to put into it. It's not like I'm like... It's not like me and Brady are having some big falling out or something, and like, you know, or like... Um, uh, kit are like arguing over the artistic direction of the band. Well... I, I've always wanted How can you kick more me out? saxophone. Of what is mine? <laughs> I've always wanted more saxophone into the theme song. <laughs> that was definitely a point of of much contention. Much contention over the years. How many years has it been? We did that. We started <clears throat> the show in May of 2017. I so don't it's been know four what years. years. Yeah. Two seasons in four years. Boy, do we both have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but they were two solid seasons. There was no. Yeah. There were. They, I really don't feel like there are any episodes that I don't think are worth listening to. Agreed. Well, there's one, but I'm not going to say which one it well, is. Yeah. <laughs> that's for you all to, to find out. That's for you all to with, figure out. With that said, though, like. With you leaving, you're welcome back. I mean, time out. I think that there's even a couple of episodes I would like to co-host with you in the future still. Um, and and yep. I want to just say like... Yeah, we got some some on the back burner. The back, back. <laughs> back, back, back burner. Back, back burner. But with that said, like, I don't know. I really value the time that you've put in and I appreciate it. And just the time that we've been able to kind of like spend together the chapter two of our weird friendship that you know has always been built on being 
the right kind of different and the right kind of same. Right. right. That is such a good way to put it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. 100%. I really appreciate you saying that, man. I'm sorry. You're not even done. Yet. I'm not even done. yet. <laughs> uh, but like, I don't know. It's just, you were one of like those anchor friendships that when I lost everyone in my deconstruction that I was able to kind of not just rebuild a new friendship, but also, um, a creative partner that can make sense and meaning. We were able to make meaning out of the nonsense that we experienced. Mm. And, and in the same way, mm-hmm. we're able to help. And that meant more to me because it, it didn't just acknowledge what I had gone through, but was able to fasten it into a creative tool that can prevent more of that Right. That's suffering for others. Right. And right, right, right. your part in that was undescribable and, and just the, the, the soundness of being there, being present and going through some of that same shit with me. And for us to kind of like go through it together and like talk to the same people and question, like that was invaluable. And, yeah. I, and I appreciate that. And I'm so grateful for uh, yeah. what, you've done and and what we've been able to make together man i man that is just so thank you for saying that it's really good that that feels really good and it feels right i mean i agree with everything you're saying it's it's the the fact that you are accurately describing our relationship makes what you just said so much more meaningful (laughs) to me you know yeah it's like you hit the nail on the head because we have always been different in the right way it's like right you were the Calvinist and I was like the hippie left it like, like hippie progressive Christian turned mystic. And I was always like push, we were always pushing each other, but we wanted to, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It was like, I hated arguing with you, but I, but I needed to argue with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and we if, would just kind of like be mean and shit on each other. And it was like our was subtle way. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, and in some ways it was, I mean, not like in a, Dest- not like in a destructive way, but right. in a way where, like, if you posted something Calvinist on Facebook, oh, yeah. I had to say a snide comment mm-hmm. about it. But it wasn't like I didn't mean it, but I totally did. You right. know what I mean? Totally. And it's like it kind of, for me, it always reminded me that I might be wrong, mm. you know? And I think that's the that role has continued between the two of us. It's like we forced each other to think I might be wrong, you know? Yeah. And it's because we don't see things so differently that there's no way to reconcile the way we think. I was thinking the same thing like before we went to break and you were describing your, um, your, your, your leaving of materialism and going into, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and really the only difference between what you're saying and I'm saying is, uh, we're making ourselves equally responsible for the same experiences. Mm-hmm. We're not adding these other experiences that need by faith, but we're just saying this is, we're only going to make ourselves experience or only what we know mm-hmm. and experience. That's all we're going to be responsible right. for. And to me, that's the important part. I'm not, I don't identify as a materialist, but like that ideology helped me through my anxiety because I had to learn what was real and what wasn't. And it helped me through deconstruction of, Oh God, if I, if I have sex with this guy, am I going to go to hell? Well, no, mm-hmm. I, that does stuff. Is not you know what I mean? So that like that process is there and, and it, it's the same, it's the same patterns. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yes. We have, we have d- like g- gone through a lot of the exact same, well, not exact same experiences, but like, uh, same archetypical experience or how would I say that? Like general yeah. experience Archetyp- yeah, I like are that. similar. We have solved those problems for ourselves in different ways. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of what made the show work is like, I represent a, a group of people. You represent a group of people. We're having a conversation about something that all of our listeners have in common, which is deconstruction. Yeah. So it's like everybody's kind of able to find the same 
thing that we have, I think, in a way. Yeah. By because we're we're always stretching the way that we think. It's we're right. always stretching the way that the other person thinks. When I discuss like a lot of things online about religion or beliefs, though, a lot of people say, "You and I are basically saying the same thing." And and in my mind, it's always a red flag of like, "No, we're actually not," mm-hmm. because there's so many implicit biases that you're not like what we talked about earlier, where we say like, "Oh, our church is for all people." Well, is, is it? Um, right. You know, th- right, there, right, there's right. an implicit bias that isn't understood there, but but whenever. I, I'm comfortable saying this, but whenever you and I are describing something and we're using different words and different terminology at the heart of it, I do think that you and I are still kind of saying around the same thing mm-hmm. in a way that isn't really present whenever somebody is like trying to talk about a faith, whatever, because you and I, we're not making room for things that don't show up and haven't earned their place. Right. And yes. so yeah. our terminology of those things yeah. are going to be a little bit different. But at the end of the day, we actually are describing the, basically the same things. Right. And right, I right, think right. that that sort of... That's cool. Yeah, that's a good way to Dual put description is helpful. And it's not contrary. It's just a difference of subjective... Yeah, style. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's it's a difference in the way that we experience the universe, and experience is purely project. Sorry, um, is purely subjective. That's the mm-hmm. way. Because <laughs> if you and I start, start listing our values, I think that it would be a few hours before we hit one that we're just like, oh, wait a second, hold on a second, <laughs> right? You know, it's um, Janeway over Picard, really? Oh God, that would be a hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard choice. That's a very hard choice. Um, I don't so, think I could make that call. No, I think I would. I think I would actually say Picard. I think is my favorite. I could make that call, but I couldn't be dogmatic on it. Right. With like you know these years that we've created this show together, what are some of kind of the moments, or uh, if I could borrow from Oprah, the aha moments oh, that have kind of <laughs> stuck with you, or taught you something that you're like okay i know that i'm going to walk away with this and it's going to change oh, my everyday life in some dude, way i mean like everything everything that we did mm. seriously but like i mean it's hard to understate that like i don't I'm, that's not going to be my actual answer but it's like literally everything we did was profound because not like that we did but like every episode every person that we covered every like Every time that somebody made a like framed something in a way that was meaningful or that lasted or that like stuck with yeah. people, those were I was right there with everybody. You know I what like I mean? That. Yeah. And it's like in the moments that I wasn't, I was trying to help cultivate those moments because I knew it was like this needs to be said. But anyway, it's like the biggest thing is trauma. The biggest thing is that I understand how trauma works now, you know? And it's, I did not before. Yeah. (laughs) And it was like, for every human, it dictates so much of your behavior. Right. Right. It like so much to the point where it's like, I am more, I'm much more aware of my trauma than most humans that exist and walk the planet. And I am still unpacking how it affects my Mm, everyday life. Every day. Absolutely. Yeah. Every every day I am unpacking how my trauma impacts how I behave every day, <laughs> you know? So it's like, that was huge, understanding that, understanding how it works in your brain, understanding what desensitizing means, understanding what reframing yeah. means, um, understanding... That is, that's what, reframing is one of those words that uh, once you understand its use, it's like, Oh, wow. You almost have to experience it to understand it. Like, just like recontextualization of of something really important that you've experienced. Uh, It goes back to that critical race. It's putting it in different shoes, not just treating it away. And so uh, the reason I mentioned that thing about shoes earlier was just like, say, the Native American teaching about walking their moccasins Uh changes so much, Uh right? And it's the same concept right here of recontextualizing it and then reframing it and you're like oh i'm the bad guy here Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. i'm the one who's being implicitly Uh unjust right 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 how do i 
how would I want somebody who's being unjust to me to admit it, apologize and do better? Uh huh. Now I need, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That, so, yeah, I mean like all of, all of this, like what's amygdala hijack? Like, what does that feel like? What does it manifest itself as, you know, mm-hmm. in my life? Or in your, you know, for each person, it's like we all are individuals, so we have individual responses to our trauma. So it's like, you know, but more recently, it's like I'm learning like how trauma lives in my body Mm. in like chronic muscle tension. You know what I mean? It's like, what was this muscle soreness that I have every day of my life? What is that? Like, what experience is that? That causes your body to recoil. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so aware now that I like hold my, my left shoulder slightly higher because it's kind of like when you're a kid and you're uncomfortable and you don't like Mm. know what you're thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Or you don't know what you're experiencing, you know, it's like, that's, Maybe my back tension. I don't know. But I never, before this show, that thought never, ever would have occurred to me in my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, because both of us ADHD and, and yeah. for me, it was just like living in a blur of going from one experience to the other and one feeling to another and not really having the ability to reflect on what's causing these. Yeah. What's causing this weird feeling that I'm, or emotion that I'm having that's creeping up that I'm not understanding the right. source of right now or right. whatever. So yeah, that's life changing. Yeah. That's life changing. Yeah. Yeah. I had a really, um, this is kind of a tangent, but it's, but it, I think it's pertinent to the reason we do the show. So I'll talk about it. Um, I had a really uh, interesting experience where I deconstructed like my sexual shame and guilt Mm -hmm. and i had to i had to come into this deep state of meditation i had to like um be able to basically i was like trying to turn on parts of my brain that i don't normally use so that i could rebuild the neurons the the connection right you're doing shrooms i was kidding (laughs) yeah right (laughs) i was doing shrooms um yeah, but I mean, more or less that similar to that headspace, right? And it's mm-hmm. like, I, I, I started writing like each time that I felt the feeling that I feel when I experience sexual shame, right? Wow, yeah. And this is something that I still experience, but after doing this work, it's not really something that I experience that much anymore. And it, it's always surrounding like I make a mistake of some sort in a sexual space and it hurts it like results in emotional pain for somebody or something like that, yeah. something similar to that. It doesn't have to be precise. It's like, if it's in that realm, I feel like intense guilt. So I I traced back, I started writing and I traced back like to each, ex- each time that that feeling like really built itself. Wow, yeah. And it came back to like, you know, you know, meetings with pastors and God, like, yeah. yeah, like uh, stuff with my ex-wife that like was like only existed because we were so entrenched in church. And then it was like, you know, uh, the first time that I kissed a girl and I didn't know how, if I should tell my parents. Did you like it? I did. Okay. I did like it. Um, and, but I didn't know how to talk to my parents about the experience because they didn't right. make space for those kinds of things. Absolutely. And it's like, I, I traced that exact feeling that is unique to that guilt associated with my sexuality all the way back to being like six wow and knowing what it knowing what experiences created it just made it stop existing because now it's just the experiences and the fact that i've dealt with them and moved you know, on that, that makes sense and it reminds me of something else that you've done that use you personally that has really been helpful in the podcast was the introduction you did that uh disqualified hell yeah 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 yeah. and what you're describing to me sounds similar uh-huh. to that same thing you're like taking let's trace it back to its roots a systematic approach to it that gets to the bottom of it mm-hmm. instead of empowering it with um, supernatural feelings or you, you know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. without like attributing or conflating, like we talked about earlier of like, Oh, well this is what that experience was without right. doing that. You yeah, have right, like been right, able right, to right, overpowered right. by systematically using human. Yeah. Human powers. In a way, another way to frame it is that I was able to like remove the moral 
demand from those experiences, which well, ultimately means that I removed God shame. from the experience. Yeah. But in order to remove shame, I had to remove God. That's you know? all. That's the root. That's right. the root, right? Well, it, it, it was part of the root. It in, was, well, in your experience of, of how you were subjectively taught and conditioned to believe and indoctrinated as a child, starting then, um, that is kind of the root. For, for me, right, at least, right, I can't right. for, sure. for your experience. Yes, 100%. But like, yeah, and if it's like, you could even get more technical and say, like, my mom, you know, has a hard time talking about sexuality because of her Catholic upbringing. Mm-hmm. So it's like... God is still the root, even though the problem it was my mom was systemically like <laughs> parenting that didn't yeah meet right. those needs in the right. way that that should have been there for your development right 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 so it's it's even you know my grandparents but it they were that way because of the Christian God so mm-hmm. it's like you, what do you do <laughs> yeah you trace it back you trace it back to its source you. You yeah. define it, yeah. and you get words for it, yeah. and then you fuck up its power right. by describing it. Right. By describing it, right? It's insane yeah. that you can do that. But I mean, but all of this to say, and I'm saying it's insane because it is, when you really start to understand how all of this shit works, and it's like your brain becomes less of a mystery. Yes. Which is huge. But it's like, without this show, I would not know any of that. And now I'm like, I feel like not an expert on it. Like I wouldn't go on a panel at a university, but it's like an armchair expert to bring it full circle yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To, to Dex Shepard. It's like, I know a lot about trauma. Though like I, I can teach you about trauma now. I was invited to speak over Zoom at MIT's like humanist group. And I was like, this is actually kind of cool. I'm like this little nerdy, like, right. Oh yeah. That's I have right. an yeah. unaccredited Bible degree. And here I'm talking to like MIT. <laughs> it finally matters. But I relate so much <laughs> with your experience of how the show has changed you because I think kind of what I was talking about earlier was having language that empowers humans and gives like boundaries for us to like say, Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm making boundaries, my relationship with deities or ideologies that don't show up in real life. And when I make those boundaries, I know where I am as a human, where I begin, where I end and where my autonomy is and my powers and my whatever. And so I feel like this show has done a lot of that work mm, for me mm-hmm. of, of, I grew up with, with bullies mm, and number mm-hmm. one, I, I want to say too, my goal is to continue the show. And, oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. The show's it, not going anywhere. Yeah, I just wanted to make that clear with the right? listeners. Like, it, it's going to be different. <laughs> this uh, is not the end of the life. After. I'm going to fi- we'll figure it out and 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 make it the best. I've got some I ideas of life after <laughs> some really good like um, interviews that I I want to do that might even be nice just being me and one other person because they're very intimate. Like, sure, yeah, uh, you could go full Letterman. Like, yes. I don't want to announce it because we haven't done it yet, but I'm planning on having my ex-wife come on and, oh, cool. and, and for us to be able to talk about our experience and how we're able to co-parent and be f- like really good friends now and like trust each other and everything right. through our deconstruction. It's the, it's the fruits in so many ways of the show. Again. Yeah. <laughs> In, in a lot and it's of ways. not like you guys aren't doing your own work at your, in your own it, time it, and she's not doing her own work, but it, it had to do with be able to word the stuff that yeah. hurt us. And then for us to realize we don't need to hurt each other. Right, 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 right. Yeah. We can provide a better, fuck. We could provide a better way uh, for our kid that wasn't offered to us, even though we had parents who claimed to have supernatural right. unity and love, right? Yeah. So, anyway, I want to continue the show, and that's and that's that's all to say. Uh, and and stay tuned. We'll, we'll, there'll be more. But the way that <laughs> the show has impacted you is that's very similar to mine, and, and I, it just that's been invaluable of. Yeah. Be, being able to stand up for yourself. Cause I, like I was saying, I was, I grew up with bullies. Like mm-hmm. my dad was abusive. He gaslit and, and growing up in that experience, I understood oh, people, people say stuff, but that doesn't mean it's true. And then, um, my, my mom, I was gonna say my other parent, but I guess you would figure it out. Uh, that parent had to respond to that bullying and became a bully to the other people around. And then that trickled down to my, my brother who's older than me. And he was, 
know, twice my size and loved WWF and uh, was physically abusive to me as growing up. And so I had like three layers of bullies inside of my my home life. Mm, and I never yeah. learned how to stand up for myself or to know where my boundaries are mm. or where I need to say enough is enough. Stop taking advantage of me. This show has allowed me to do that to my belief system mm. and a belief system that had its hand in control on me from the moment I was born and even in systemic ways that you were describing with your family of, of saying, well, no, this ideology fucked them up and, and I had to experience their response to it. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those layers were there, but when you grow in that awareness, get a name for it and you can defeat it because you take the power away from it. Mm. And this show is allowed that. And that means a lot. Yeah. Because again, it doesn't just acknowledge suffering. It's giving the ability to alleviate it and to reduce its potential as we progress as a species, Mm -hmm. um, as like the sentient animals on earth right now who are kind of in charge of making decisions, right? Um, And until we're sharing that with aliens, I guess, like it's humans. Right, right. And, And this is how... This show, to me, is a step of how we can improve within the context that I've experienced Mm. for that greater good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well said. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) For sure, Uh, man. That and the fart jokes, man. I just love all the fart jokes. jokes. We got so many fart jokes. Did we? Did we? I don't know. I was just trying to make a juxtaposition of like something meaningful to (laughs) fart jokes. I think we made a lot of. There are a lot of inappropriate sex jokes, some of which got cut, Uh, but they still exist on my hard drive. (laughs) (laughs) That's why they call it a hard drive. You know, and it's been cool too of like the people we've met. Oh, along dude. Oh, this my God. Way. So many good people we've met. So many. I pr- There's a... It's it's hard to say this definitively, but there is a chance that I might not be with my girlfriend if <laughs> if it wasn't for this show. Yeah, yeah. Because she came to one of... She came to the, uh, the party that we had here. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that was like the origin story. That was the story. first time I met her, yeah. Oh my God, that's that awesome. crazy? Yeah. I never really thought about that before, but that's true. Aw. Aw. But we, we did meet again later, so maybe we would have met anyway, but I like to think that it's because of the show. It's like Lost, you know? <laughs> and when... <laughs> If you flash sideways, <laughs> we haven't met because there's no show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. We're, but we're searching for each other, but we don't know it yet. Yeah. And it's actually purgatory, and we're going to meet. Right. And when we're united, then we We could walk into that light together. Uh, Sorry, if anybody hasn't seen, is currently watching Lost, but has not seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert. (laughs) But also, I'm not cutting it. It's 15 years or whatever, right? But uh, I'm thinking of some of just the personalities and people that we've met. And one part that I appreciate about it is. You know, we grew up in St. Louis and we still live here, uh, getting to like meet these people that we probably wouldn't have been able to meet and hear their experiences that wouldn't have been easily available to say, for us to hear as well. You know, I think that's like a cool part that I love about technology is that uh, we have the ability to bring experiences to us. You're right. In ways that, you know, like we don't have to go out and try to find. <laughs> right. I get in a truck and be like, We're like, let's have a Zoom call with this semi famous guy. Like, right. Let's just do it because we can. Yeah. And just like, <laughs> what is, what, what it, and, and what I love about the show, and, and I have said this like twice already, but what made it important is it wasn't about what our new beliefs are at each step. It wasn't right. us trying right, right, to right, say, right. Oh well, now we followed this path, and right. we need to do that. Was it. that's what would be like so contrary to the point? It's not about that. We're, we're talking about actual real life experiences, right. and have allowed 
people to share theirs. And then each time you see, oh shit, my experience intersected Uh right there. Right, right, right. Not in these other weird, like, metaphors that you want me to pick up on now my sure. experience isn't there my experience is talking about exactly what happens and seeing the parallels there sure sure yeah. yeah 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 that's real yeah it's interesting that i never would have done this show if you hadn't if you hadn't come to me and said like i have this idea for a show do you want to do it i never would have done it but i mean but in hindsight it's funny because i'm an enneagram three and it's like what we do it's like we we get into other people's projects and we're like, <laughs> yeah, but what if you this and this and yeah. this? And that's sort of what I did. I just, you were like, let's do some interviews. And I was like, cool, I have top of the line audio equipment. Right, right. <laughs> do you want it to sound amazing? <laughs> like, sure. And like, yeah. So I apologize like, if sport, the quality yeah. goes down in the next episodes, but anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I, you know, it's like, what if we do intros? What if we do some writing outside of the show? You know, uh, what if we, since we're having this guest and we don't really want to hear their story, let's, why don't we ask them this? Why don't we frame the episode mm, this way? And that's like, yeah. that was a lot of my contribution to the what show. What is Enneagram 3? What is that, like the title of it? Or oh, the... dude, I am just, I'm so late to the party. You are, I'm okay. just getting into this stuff and I, I could remember it if I thought about it. I'm a 4.5, okay. uh, which is, if I'm remembering this correctly, I'm not like super into this. I feel like it's a good, it's a relationship people have with like putting into boxes or labels. It's like, no, these are descriptions of who you are. Uh-huh. Not that, oh, I need to like identify as this, right? Right. So I really relate to 4.5, which is like a, a romantic, who's somebody who's who had something that was lost. And so they are are, are there to create things to describe and fill that void Mm. and then a five is somebody who collects things um, and collects experiences oh right right, and what i realized that as you know the way that my enneagram came through as this podcast is i lost god right or this this ideology that was so central in my life and and hurt me in big ways and so i wanted to create something to describe that by collecting people's experiences that also you know what i mean so it's like that reflected so much into the creativity behind this sure yeah yeah plus your three and then just added together and i think was really synergetic if i can use that word (laughs) synergetic (laughs) promote synergy yeah but it's but it's true yeah and it worked well um so yeah yeah man um i feel like that's it, an episode. That's of an the episode, show. baby. Do, do we have anything else we want to say? I um, do. Oh, I guess I do. I do want to say, I want to. I want to go on a little monologue. Um, so, a lot of my, a lot of my life, a lot of my important life moments happen underneath this maple tree in my backyard. Uh, it's like right outside of my deck so if i'm sitting on my deck i'm under it but i also have a hammock tied to it that's tied to okay the that's true so, yeah it's a nice one yeah yeah and i have like a insofar as i feel like i can have a relationship with a tree i have a relationship with it hmm. like i would be a little heartbroken if it got cut down i feel like i don't know if it has guided me but it has been the place where i feel comfortable guiding myself if yeah. that's how it works you know and um, I, there was this one day I was out there and I was just kind of vibing. And a lot of times back then when I was just in my sort of default mode network where I was just like not doing anything in particular, my thoughts would latch on to some Christian injustice, right? Because it's like I was in the middle of deconstructing. I had decided I didn't believe in God and it was still... A prominent daily uh, interrupter of my thoughts. Yeah, at the time, and I started writing down. Just like I was like so caught up in how angry I was about whatever it was. I don't remember. I started like typing up like ideas about how to explain why it's wrong, mm. and I just like started 
making a list after that of like topics and ways to describe to Christians or to deconstructors or whatever. I wouldn't, I wasn't even using the word deconstruction then, you know, it was right. just like I was in the heat of it. And there was nothing then. This was before ex evangelicals, this was before us. Yeah. This was before like Dare to Doubt. There's like, there was very nothing. little. Yeah. And it, if you found it, you were lucky, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you would have to go to like a bookstore to find, you know, Marlene one L's like, yeah, like, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And you're like, there was nobody to tell you that that book was good. Right. You know, it's like, there's this book from so 1970. Like, right, am, I gonna, right. am I gonna just blind invest in this book that has a title that I think fits what I'm doing? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it was like, there's no context anyway. I started writing all this stuff down and it was like, I, I was like, I need to write a book. I need to write a book or I need to start blogging or something mm. like I need to get this out. And, uh, but it, it like naturally didn't go anywhere because I have a hard time initiating projects and actually following through all the way till finish. I will immerse myself in the project for months, but I will never finish it. And then you came along at, we, we started talking again because you came out on Facebook. This was when you were like dabbling in liberal Christianity. Okay, yeah. And your whole fucking, you know, inbred hometown fucking <laughs> came after you. And I was yes. just so livid because I was like fully deconstructed at this point. Yeah. And I was like, these are a bunch of fucking clowns. So I just started like shit posting and trolling. I vaguely remember this. Yes. I was like, fuck these people. Yeah. I remember, um, one guy was like, I said something like really trolly and goofy and it was like, everybody should just dance or like, I don't know. It was yeah, like, yeah. everybody should just fucking have fun or whatever. And this guy was like, you're 27 and you da 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 da. And I was like, I'm 27 and I have more fun than you. I was just like, yes. I was just like on this like rant. Rebel is like, like, give a I just Bart Simpson, want, like this is the exact like, this target shit. that I want. Yeah. And I was like, I remember afterwards, I was like, ah, I hope that I didn't make this worse for Brady by just like trolling all these people. I did not. not at all. Hindsight, but. And it, just give them time and I would troll them myself mm -hmm. when I was comfortable exactly. enough to start doing that. Right. Yeah. You were like trying to make space for these people. And I was just like, no, fuck these people. Like I need to, <laughs> I need somebody to advocate for Brady in a way that's like, literally, you do not have to value these I people. That. Yes, yes, <laughs> at yes. all or any of their opinions and then so we as a result of all of that you like reached out to me because you knew i had left the faith yeah and none of us knew a lot of people you were one of the few people that reached yeah. out to me at that point um i remember like, it was like an, small it was a handful of people it was like you and uh prisca that was in season oh, one yeah. prisca and jamie lee finch and yeah. dr james croft uh-huh uh even though he had not grown up in christianity i oh no 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 this you're thinking later oh it was I'm even thinking before about that. when we well <gasps> no no you're right you're right so it yeah, was then and but we kind of it was that's when we started a little like, bit before that we had like a facebook like message we, we met at a at um starbucks no the um we met at the 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 falafel place on manchester what's this called layla yeah we met at layla. Layla, layla yeah anyway yeah so we met at layla and we had this conversation yes. that was like i want to do this podcast do you want to be a guest and I was like, oh, yeah, sure, like, definitely. And then it was like, we did the first episode, which we scrapped, mm -hmm. because it wasn't good. It was, like, too scattered. It didn't, like... Yeah. We I was were... trying to tell my story, but it wasn't, like, panning out in a way that made sense. So I was like, we need to scrap this, because I, I had also agreed to do, like, audio and stuff for mm -hmm. the podcast. And I was like, let's scrap it. And then we re-recorded and did the episode that everybody has one. heard. Mm -hmm. And I what remember like editing and listening it, and I was like, "I want to do this. This is show. something. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to. I want to be a co-host." And so I asked you, and you were like open to it, and it was like Fuck from yeah. there we just like started doing it, and it's crazy because we we literally just interviewed some of your friends, right? And then it, people just started listening. But but here's the thing: is like when you. What is that feeling that you experienced when you could hear in your own words, you telling your own story? What did that feel like? I just remembered that I was supposed to be monologuing right now. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Pardon. I'll just jump back into the monologue. Um, anyway, so yeah, so you, 
we met at Layla and you, uh, you know, asked me to do the show. I, we, I did it, you know, I did the interview. We scrapped the first episode. We re-recorded it. Uh, and then I was like, I want to do the show with you. And it was like this, it like was not something that I was expecting in my life at all. Like I was not, I was kind of a lone wolf in my Mm. deconstruction. Like I was like, sort of like, not like act, not like full on sword fighting all these Christians that I knew, but I was like being i was like stepping outside of my bounds and i did not have anybody there to like help me after those experiences you know? yeah yeah and i was like this is the place where i can put all of that mm. you know um and it's like i know there are going to be people listening but i thought it would be like a few thousand people you know and i mean it is a few thousand people but like i thought it would be like i thought we would work our way up to like two thousand regular it, listens or something it just it hit early yeah in good ways yeah yeah that was helpful well it was it was when we did the episode with jamie jamie it was for all of us that was the moment you know (laughs) it's like she nailed the interview and we you know provided the space that she needed to say the things that she wasn't finding space to say and man it's like it's you know it's hard to describe it in any way but like it feels magic you know yeah it really does because it was like There was so much that we were oblivious to when it happened that ended up being like so much bigger than we thought it would be for, for us internally, for us as like, you know, podcast hosts and for like everybody that listens, like we did not know, um, we didn't know what we were getting into, but we but then like a month later we would see the impact of it and it was like holy shit yeah and in so many ways i have to say like this this show helped me believe in myself Mm, i like that because i have my whole life i have been i i collect knowledge like i'm a i'm really good at jeopardy you know Mm mm-hmm so I like I collect and I just see I sop up all of this knowledge and I process it and I have ideas, but I have ADHD, and part of the reason that I am able to like sop up information and come up with ideas because I have ADHD. But then it's like I will pour my heart and soul into work, into art, into you know a book idea, into a blog post, whatever, and then I'll just like lose all of that momentum mm-hmm. and my whole life it's been this struggle of like i have all these great things to say i have all this important stuff the world needs to know i have this art that i think people would resonate with and you know that's not me being arrogant it's just like you know when you have something right 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 and i've never until this show i've never had anything to show for any of that wow and it's not that having something to show for it is like all all of the value there but when you do have something to show for it it's so much easier to think that you can do it again or to think that you weren't wrong all those years of believing in yourself and being like i have something i just don't know how to get it out Mm -hmm. and we did something that grew and that like resonated with people and that i'm proud of it was good absolutely uh, I'm proud of the way we did episodes. I'm proud of the music. I'm proud of the commercials. And even the online community, it wasn't even part of our initial plan, but the way that that came yeah. together. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Like we kind of thought that was going to be like a small side thing that we do. And it really is kind of the center now yeah. in some ways. Um, and man, I like that is invaluable because I'll live the rest of my life knowing that I can do this. We can and if look I can back do this, this yeah. I can do whatever I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody coached me on how to edit, how to make a podcast sound good, how to ask good questions in an interview. I never learned any of that stuff, but I, but I, I wanted to do it and I did it and you did it with me and we did it together. And without you, I probably couldn't have done it. And without our listeners, I definitely couldn't have done it. So I, it's like, that, that is, it. that's something I will have for the rest of my life. And I, it's, I can't put value to that. 
you are welcome back. And if there's times that you find yourself riding there, it's your, what kind of tree is it? It's a maple, your sugar maple. maple tree. And, and God, I just need to get this off my, your, come back, okay, do cool, that. And, cool, and, you're, cool. and in it. the future episodes, I know there's been a couple that we've got playing that we're like, you know, Chuck would be fun to bring back for this and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you're always welcome back. This is still your that. house. And um, thank you for creating this with me and yeah. for the time that you put into it and the efforts and what you've done for our community and everybody in it. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, um, I do want to say I am going to keep doing work in this space, uh, in the space of religious trauma. Um, I have been working on a framework for deconstruction. So basically what I want to focus on is two things. Is, okay, so I just decided I don't believe in God. What do I do next? is the is where it's, I want to start. Okay. And then where I want to end is how do I how do I well okay, this is where I think I want to end now because mm-hmm. this is where my life journey has taken me. Yeah. And who knows what I'm what I'll learn in the process, but I think where I want to end is how do I forgive that experience? And what does it mean to forgive that experience? And how do I remove the baggage of forgiveness from the Christian That's language? Huge. Right. And, uh, that's, what's been meaningful for me. And that's where like my understanding of this whole entity subculture, you know, world of evangelical deconstruction, particularly, um, that's where that whole journey has taken me to this point. And now it's like, in some ways I feel like this is chapter three, chapter three of our friendship. There we go. And in many ways, it's chapter three. Like it was like chapter one was Christian Chuck. Chapter two is deconstructing Chuck. Chapter three is who knows what's happening from this point on. But it's basically mega starting truck. right now. Mega Chuck. I'm mega call, Chuck. Call mega Chuck. Yeah. I'm gonna grow fifty feet. <laughs> Make my monster grow. <laughs> That's Rita Rapunzel throwing her. Rita Rapunzel. Is, is <laughs> Rapunzel. Repulsa. Repulsa. Rita, Rita Repulsa. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Jesus. <laughs> Let down my long <laughs> hair. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, thank Zork, you, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you a million times to everyone who has listened to this show, who has told somebody about this show, um, who has just like written a review, liked it, commented on our posts, commented on the Facebook page, everyone in the <laughs> Facebook community, this, the most beautiful experience I've ever had in my life is watching people grow in that community. Yeah. And I know oh I'm, not, God. I'm not like loud in there, but I am watching often. Like yeah. I don't post a lot in there, but I am often reading what people are saying. And I love it. I love it. It like gives me so much life. Thank you to all those people. Thank you to all the OG mods. Thank you for all the new mods. Um, thank you to every guest. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, man, so many. Thank you, Brady. You're welcome. Thank you, Chuck. Not thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know. I just one thing I want to say too is just remember, if you don't go to church, Chuck, um, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, you say it. You say it. I want you Sunday. I want you to get it. Sunday. Sunday. Mm-hmm. What is, is it? It's a. Uh, it's just a second Saturday. Thank you so much for listening. I will be back. Brady will be back. And Chuck so will be will back I, eventually. eventually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, stick with the show. It's going to grow. Will you Will you grow with us? Talk Keep to you going. later. Bye, guys. Let me put on the that for you a little bit.
TED Talks, elevating events that are non-stop, circulating your views in a closed crop, cutting verses up like a chop shop, with copies and signs like a bookshop, pasted in like Bibles on backdrops, feeling bad for shit on your laptop, it's a bad prop for holding beliefs in a sad book, relieving your grief in an outlook that promises peace with a bait hook that doesn't release, I was caught on the line of repression, asking myself the same question over and over and over with no progression, decided to change my only direction ahead, leaving the fall for the spread, headed to hell in my bed, if living is lying down then I'd rather be dead, they said our thoughts are dangerous, nobody's can we trust, like we're made of 